Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Today on Roll for Crit, we are reviewing Castles of Tuscany, a new game from Stefan Feld, designer of Castles of Burgundy. This has some things in common with that title. This time, of course, you are in Tuscany, not Burgundy. Uh, it's 15th century Italian Renaissance. You are all princes trying to develop your regions, which of course translates to gathering victory points via various means, mostly creating new buildings and filling in your board with different colored tiles to score those points. The game's actually going to start with each player receiving three separate land tiles with A, B, and C, and you will have to arrange them in certain patterns. This is actually important because it makes the boards a bit asymmetrical for players, and you'll have to decide how to group things, as we'll explain a little bit later. Now, on your turn, you have three actions. You can draw cards, which you will draw from this deck of cards, and you'll use these cards later on to play tiles. You may then, as another different action, take a tile, that is simply taking a tile from the common eight, adding it to your reserves, and then you will replace it not from the common stack, but from your own personalized stacks. This is actually the timer for the rounds for when someone's pile runs out, that ends that round. Finally, you can play that tile. In order to play the tile, you'll have to meet some requirements. First, the tile that you're playing has to be placed on a space matching its color. So a red tile has to go on a red space. Next, it needs to be touching a tile that's already placed on your board. You'll start off with a castle, and as you guess, you will grow, but making sure to touch tiles already on the board. The final requirement is actually paying for the tile. To place a tile, you'll need to discard two cards of the matching color. However, you can substitute a card for a pair of another color, as long as they are matching. And now we're going to loop back around to a couple things I mentioned earlier. When you place a tile, if it is the last tile in its sector, so you place this either one red and it's one red, or maybe these two light green farm spaces and the two light green spaces, you're going to score that sector. Now, depending on how many spaces it was, you're going to go up that many points on the green track. There is a difference between the green and red track. We'll get to that a little bit later. But you will score one point for one, three for finishing up a two sector, and a total of six points for finishing a three sector. Now, let's go back earlier to taking a tile. If you recall, I said you replace it with one tile from your pile. Should you empty the pile of whatever round you're in, you will declare to everyone that you've done so. That will end that round and cause a scoring phase. The way scoring works is you'll actually look at where your token is in the green circle and add it to the red circle. It will not reset, so it will slowly compound. So for example, if you end the round with five points in the green circle and you get five more points in the second round, you're going to add an, an additional 10 in the second round, not just five. That means scoring earlier on is going to give you a lot more points in scoring at the last third round. Another final note on that third round, if someone declares ending the game in that third round, unlike the other two, everyone else gets one extra turn. In addition to scoring points for filling in different regions on your board, the tiles also have their own innate abilities that trigger once you pay for them and place them somewhere. First up are the dark green castles. If you place one of these, you get to take another tile from the available supply and immediately place it somewhere on your board, abiding by the normal placement rules without having to pay the cost. Next are city tiles, the red ones. When you place one of these, you get to take an upgrade square tile and put it next to your board. Each one of these, depending on which one you pick, has a special ongoing ability that will make your actions even stronger. For example, let you draw another card when you take the draw action or let you store an additional hex so you can store two or three maybe before you have to spend one to take a new one. Then there's the in hex, which is blue. If you place one of these, you get to take the special blue hexagon piece, and this can be placed in the future anywhere you want. It basically acts as a wild type of tile. So if you just can't find the color that you really need, you can use this as long as you can pay for it and place it in the right spot. 
the agriculture hex is light green, and there are different types of agricultures depicted on these, and each time you place one in a region, you'll score a point for every type shown on it, as well as any other type of agriculture hex in that same area. So you get more points for having different types. If you just have one of the same type, that's only gonna be worth one point, so you wanna try for a variety when you're placing these. Next up are the quarries, which are gray. These reward you with marble when built, and you can use marble on your turn to get an extra free action uh, just once per turn. So this is a good way to get ahead and maybe grab a tile before someone else does, make sure they can't do something before you get a chance to. The yellow monastery hex allows you to draw three cards from the top of the deck for future building rounds, so a nice little bonus. The orange village hex gives you a worker piece. You can use a worker as a card of any color. So if you're not getting the color cards that you need, you can spend a worker instead to place a tile. And finally, the wagon hex lets you draw a yield card. Yield cards could have all kinds of bonuses, maybe more cards to draw, or even some points on that red track. As we said, you'll repeat this for three rounds and see who's the best prince and got, of course, the most victory points. And that's pretty much it. It's definitely, I, I definitely would want to call this a cousin of Castles of Burgundy. It's not just in the name. You know, it does feel like the same universe, so to speak. Yeah, I think cousin is the right word. It's not, it's not close enough to be like a sister game. <laughs> it's a cousin. I think it's definitely, you know, Castles of Burgundy, which we have reviewed elsewhere on this channel, the new edition, so you can go check that out if you're unfamiliar, is a much more, it's a much longer game. It's, uh, there's more depth to it, and it's more about strategizing over a long period of time. There are a lot of different tiles with unique abilities. This, to me, feels like a lighter, faster version of that. Much faster, I would say. Usually your turns are, like we said, all, you're either drawing, taking a tile, or placing a tile. And yeah. whereas in castles, I feel like even like after many rounds, there's always be something new would come out and I'd be like, hold on. I don't remember what that does. <laughs> Once you, it's pretty easy to get a handle on what the different tiles do in this game. And there are ways to have these really weird, crazy turns, especially if you have multiple of the marble spaces and marble collected. But yeah. for the most part, it didn't really feel like there was always going to be that time when you have to think like six turns ahead because some weird interactions. It was really just, do I need the tile or do I need to draw cards? And yeah, I think, go ahead. What, what was interesting is there's, the deck of cards, there's a huge variety of tiles. I mean, you just heard Jonathan list through all of them. And sometimes you're, you really are looking for a certain color and you're just either A, when that tile finally flips, it's not on your turn and someone else also wants that village tile, for example. Or you're just drawing cards and you're like, Yes, you could still spend four cards, but it hurt. It, fe it feels really bad to spend four versus two. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the ticket to ride thing again, where you have to decide like, is it worth it for me to keep digging and keep digging for the colors I want? I think this game is much more about. Um, T thinking on the fly tactically, like depending on what comes out, it's hard, much harder to be like, I'm going all oranges this game or something like that. You could try, but generally it's like, look, there's a blue tile there. I've got blue cards. I'm, I'm going for it. That's the thing to play right now, I think. Uh, and it does help that there are, like you said, being able to play two for one can be helpful. Also the workers too, speaking of those orange yeah. tiles, are really good. Uh, so, you know, there are, they definitely throw things at you. And if you go for that upgrade tile early, which is the one that lets you get an extra card, that's going to be really helpful. I think that is honestly, uh, well, I honestly, like, maybe a guarantee. Like you need that card tile. I, I would think. say that needs to be either your first one that you get at the beginning of the game or your first red space. Like I it almost felt like it, you always needed it or at least for yeah. me. What did you think about the scoring? Cause I can't think of, I mean, there probably is maybe even, I don't remember exactly how castles of Burgundy scored, but you know, I'm used to just adding points, but instead the way it worked was when you end a round, so let's say we ended, and like I explained earlier, I have five points, Jonathan has six in the green circle. The red tracker goes up five and six spaces for our colors, but you don't reset the green tracker, you keep it where it is. So if I earn six more points later on, but Jonathan also gets six, we're not tied anymore because he still got the extra bump earlier. And it's this weird compounding. So if you earn one point in the first round, that's the equivalent of earning three points in the last round because it keeps adding. Right. 
Right, right. Or by the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty weird. And at first I really wasn't sure I understood it. And as it went, I was like, okay, I get it. It definitely, I guess it encourages you getting a lot of points early on, which is something you see in a lot of games where things score multiple rounds. So it's like, okay, you want to do that early because it'll keep helping you. But it's just, you know, I have never seen it quite visualized in this way. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I, I like, I don't, I don't not like it. I think it's interesting and I don't mind it. And it's makes you think about it in a little bit of a different way. I don't know that it makes that much of a difference. Like would the game be that different if it were just a traditional scoring track? I'm not sure. Might yeah. be a little different. I think I would like I like the mechanic of it, but relatively speaking, I don't think this is that much of a point salad game. So it's not nearly like, oh, what's this weird thing I can do earlier on or something. It was just mostly, I guess I should score this one region instead of trying to get that two set shaped region in the yeah, first I, rounds. And I then agree of with course that, yeah. once you hit the third round, it didn't really matter. Right. Yeah, there aren't as many. Uh, your choices are a little more straightforward, cut and dry. But but I liked that, you know, uh, in comparison to Castles, I, I like that this one is pretty quick. It, it moves. Uh, you're not sitting around just like struggling like, oh, my God, there's 12 different ways I could go with this. I thought if you I think if you like the Castles gameplay, this is definitely different enough that it, it doesn't neither one replaces the other. But this is something that I feel like you almost could introduce this, I think, to more of like the Ticket to Ride crowd. I think it acts more as that gateway level game versus something more a much heavier Euro game that I would generally associate with a Stefan Feld design, I think. Crits and misses for the Castles of Tuscany. Crits. This new take on the Castles of Burgundy Euro-style gameplay moves at a much faster pace, keeping players involved all the way up until the end of the game, which won't take you that long to reach. The streamlined actions as well as the quick timer for ending rounds with the pile of tokens means that you can get through multiple games relatively quickly and also not be too much of a burden for new players. There are two scoring tracks, one of which adds to your total score at the end of each round, not just once, giving you a bit of a different way to look at your strategy and allowing your early plays to pay off more so by the end of the game. It's interesting to not just weigh how many resources convert into victory points, but whether you score in the first round versus the third. That adds a bit more complexity to this game. Misses. There are a few rules that are a bit confusing. That's because the rulebook does a very poor job explaining it. In particular, we really suggest you go online to find out what happens when the round ends in order to make sure you're playing it right on who gets turns and who doesn't. If you look at the Board Game Geek entry for this game, there's actually a big note in the description that some of the rules in the English edition have issues, and they have a whole Frequently Asked Questions page that will help you out if you're learning the game. While it is nice that this game was designed so your turns would be quick, it does feel like there really isn't too much shifting and different strategies for you to try out. It's simply what cards you have, what's available, buy the tile and place it. It doesn't seem like you're going to be trying out new alternatives to how you played in previous games. The trade-off for this game being faster than Castles of Burgundy is you lose a little bit of depth once you are familiar and you really lock into which upgrades are the best and what each tile does. You're probably going to have a rough idea of what you're going to need to do each time you play. While this game was enjoyable and definitely Denver, I think, overstayed its time at the table, I, I do feel it was like a gateway game. Once you've played enough times and if you're already really well immersed in the uh, board game hobby, tabletop hobby, you are you get it. You know, you know what's going on. And it also doesn't help too much. I feel any time a game has beige as a major color component, you know, it's not going to be the flashiest, you know, or heavy thematic game out there. No, it is another one of those Euro games for sure. It's, uh, uh, you know, Stefan Feld's got castles in the title. You, you kind of know what you're in, getting into in terms of theme. I, I still really liked it, though, I have to say. I mean, it's not as strong a game as Castles of Burgundy overall. But if I'm being honest with myself and you're asking me which of those two games am I probably going to end up playing more often at the table with, with a group of players... You could probably play three or four games of this <laughs> in the time it would take you to play Castles of Burgundy and even and teach it uh, like five times in the time it would take you to teach Castles of Burgundy. And I kind of like how 
the pace that it moves at. And yeah, eventually you will get into the, some of the strategies. And, you know, if, if you're in it for that kind of thing, it'll probably wear out its welcome a little sooner than some other games. But I guess uh, we haven't played it enough that I've hit that point yet. So I don't I don't mind it as much. So I, I kind of like it as being that that alternative, but still giving you sort of that Euro style of game, uh, which you don't see too much of. I, there aren't usually it's one or the other, and it, yeah, you definitely lose some of that depth. But I, I did have fun playing it. it. It probably would get bumped up another notch or two if, like you said, there was something more exciting going on in terms of the flavor, the components. It is it is that same kind of look that you're used to, which you're either cool with that and you love those kinds of games or you look at this and fall asleep, which I <laughs> fair to either of those <laughs> yeah. points of view, I think. I don't think it's terrible in any kind of sense. It's just for me, you know, it's, it, I think this happens with a lot of gateway games in general, or you either just like, you'll always be happy to have it hit the table. It's not like it, it's bad. It's just when it, you might be like a little bored when you see it and not just because the theme, like you mentioned earlier, it's just like, I, I get it. I know what I do. And I think I just happened to hit that earlier than you did. And that's well, not a hey bad now. thing. Hey, now, I won our games. Let's not go. Let's not say, <laughs> make statements like that. <laughs> I, I'm not saying it's because I lost. <laughs> no, no, you I know. know. I just made it sound like, uh, but I, but I, no, I know what you mean. Like, we, I think we both locked into the strategy. I think that I'm just still kind of like, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's an no. okay strategy. And uh, when you want to hit the table again, especially uh, in person, whenever that happens. I'm totally down for that. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how this stands the test of time in a year or two from now. Uh, maybe it is something that you just bring out, like you said, to introduce new gamers to the heavier versions of this. Or maybe it's something you like to play in between other games. Or maybe you get tired of it and move on to something else. We will Only time will tell. But those are our opinions on it as of now. You can let us know if you've had the chance to play Castles of Tuscany. What do you think in those comments down below? How do you like the, the look and feel of this one compared to other Stefan Feld titles? And of course, especially uh, Castles of Burgundy or even the Castles of Burgundy card game or any other games that you want to talk about. Just let it all out. Let it all out down there. Let us know right now in those comments down below. And be quick because there will be a Meeple Gallery very soon by the end of this month. So we want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, I guess until then, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This is Roll for Crit. Catch the latest from Roll for Crit by liking and subscribing and supporting us on Patreon. You're not a hidden traitor, are you? Come on, like us.